Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. This is Mr. Kite, and today we will be talking more about plants. Specific topic is going to be angiosperm life cycle. So let me get you your objectives, and we'll go ahead and get going. Two things I need you to know or be able to do by the end of the video. First is to describe the purpose and process of double fertilization. Second, and this is kind of the topic for the whole video, is the angiosperm life cycle. So let me take you through the steps of that cycle, and then we're going to go ahead and get into some specific processes. So we're going from pollen to pear today, starting out with the formation of our pollen and egg, and then we're going to take that all the way through to the formation of a fruit. So the basic steps are as follows. Development of gametophytes, that's making your pollen and your eggs. Pollination, double fertilization, seed development, and dispersal. And then after that, you would have seed germination. So those are our steps we're going to go through. Let's get to it. So first thing we need to talk about is the development of gametophytes. Gametophyte is just the egg or the sperm. Um, plants do have eggs and sperm. The sperm we'll start with. Sperm is carried in pollen, and that develops on the anther of a flower. So the anther is right here. It's the piece that sticks up above. And within this anther, you have a series of mitotic and meiotic divisions. Each is going to produce a microspore. Sorry, guys, we are small. Each of those microspores is going to do something interesting. It's going to form two cells. And inside this two cells, you're going to get two, form, or two sperm and a tube cell. We'll talk about the purpose of the tube cell in a moment. But know that each one of these pollen grains, tube cell and two sperm. Women, it's a little more complicated. You form a megaspore inside the ovule, which is this central part of the plant right here. And this ovule is going to go through a bunch of different divisions. Um, the first division, which happens right here, is going to give one surviving megaspore. Even though this divides, forming, I believe, four megaspores, only one of them is going to survive. The other ones are going to die. That one megaspore is going to go through a series of divisions, giving the following pieces. The antipodal cell, which are three little cells that hang out up here at the top. You've got two polar nuclei. Those are going to be important in a minute. And then down at the bottom, you've got a set of three cells. In the middle is the egg, and there are two synergids on the sides. Each of these are haploid cells. All those ones that I talked about are haploid cells. And the whole thing is contained within an ovule, and this would be the megaspore that is the female gametophyte. Now that we have got our gametes, we need to actually pollinate these things. You've seen this picture before. This is many different types of pollen grain. Um, pollination can happen in a ton of different ways. You can have pollen just carried on the wind when that pollen grain sticks to the stigma of a female or of a flower. Pollination has occurred. We all know that insects carry pollen from one plant to the next. Bees are the famous example, but moths do it and a ton of other insects also carry out that process of pollination. You can also have birds doing the same thing. So plants have got a ton of strategies for getting that pollen from one flower to the next. Now in some cases they do self-pollinate, which means that their own pollen will attach to their own stigma and they will go ahead and you know produce seeds and fruit. But as much as possible, obviously, that plant wants to get a genetic mix-up, so it wants to send its pollen out and away from itself to the new horizons of new flowers to pollinate. Once pollination has occurred, meaning that the pollen grain has stuck to the stigma of the flower, a really interesting process happens called double fertilization. This is kind of how it goes down. So pollination is different from fertilization know that pollination is just the pollen grain sticking to the stigma fertilization is where the sperm actually gets to the egg so here's kind of how the steps work pollen grain lands on the stigma and the first thing that happens is a little tunnel grows called the pollen tube the um, pollen grain carries a set of cells that will become this hollow tube that is going to grow down the style of our flower providing a little tunnel for the sperm once we've got that pollen tube grown, two sperm are going to travel down the tunnel. <clears throat> One sperm is going to fertilize the egg right here, and that egg is going to become diploid. It's going to be 2N. And then the other sperm is going to come up here and fertilize these two 
polar nu nuclei, and they will be 3N, and they're going to become the endosperm. We'll talk about what that is in a second. So just know that in this process, you get two sperm. One fertilizes the egg, making it diploid, and that will become the zygote. The other one fertilizes the polar nucleoid, nuclei, and that will become the triploid endosperm. So once that double fertilization has occurred, our newly fertilized zygote can go ahead and start developing into a seed. Um, there are a couple of consequences of double fertilization that you need to be aware of. We talked about those polar nuclei. The polar nuclei, remember they are now a triploid structure, are going to develop into the endosperm of the seed. Endosperm is this area within our seed. The whole purpose of the endosperm is to provide nutrition for the zygote as it is hanging out in kind of a dormant state. Um, the zygote itself will be represented by this portion of the seed right here. And essentially what a seed does is after it gets everything set up, it gets a seed coat around the outside of it for protection, gets the endosperm there, gets our zygote all ready to germinate when ready. The seed dehydrates, and once it's dehydrated, it hangs out in a dormant state where, you know, seeds can last for quite a while. Once that seed becomes rehydrated, it'll go ahead and germinate and start growing up into an actual plant. But just know that all of that fertilization that takes place is with the intent of forming the seed that we have got here. Also know that that zygote that has been fertilized becomes the seed, not the fruit. And here's where we finish, fruit. I know fruit are delicious, fruit are beautiful. As far as plants are consumer, concerned, the only purpose of fruit is to get their seed from one place to the other. Um, we talked about the development of our ovule, or of our, yeah, of our ovule. And the thing I want you to note is that, you know, if you've eaten an apple, apple's got a couple seeds in the middle of it. That whole zygote and seed thing that we just talked about, those are the seeds that are in the middle. The rest of the ovary is what develops into the actual fruit. So if I were to draw a really crude picture, you've got your ovary right here. In the middle of it is the zygote that's going to become the seed. All of this on the outside is what's actually going to develop into the fruit. This is why, for the most part, not always, but for the most part, the seeds are in the middle of the fruit. Um, the whole reason a plant wants to develop a fruit is so that organisms will eat those fruit. Once they've eaten the fruit and ingested the seeds, as they move about their daily business, eventually they will excrete those seeds back out into the soil. So the whole purpose of a fruit for a plant is to get their seeds to move from one place to the other. No, and I have students make this mistake all the time, the fruit does not nourish the seed. It does not nourish the zygote, the endosperm nourishes the zygote, and the seed is self-contained. The seed would be just fine without the fruit. The seed just wouldn't be able to move from one place to another. So that's why plants want to go through the trouble of developing delicious, delicious fruit. So thank you for hanging out with us on the Lab 207 webcast. Sorry for the edits that were in there. I got interrupted midstream, but I hope we'll see you again. Have a good day.